Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. Um, we are of course well into our third week and um, as we saw last time, we have um, covered several important notions which uh, you know, include stability, uniform stability, and attractivity properties. And um, we are, of course, uh, going to be, um, you know, starting to be able to look at uh, very, very special properties that is, properties of stability and attractivity for um, dynamical systems in closed loop, right? Um, for algorithms that are driving systems, such as what you see in my background. Right. So, without uh, delaying any further, let's look at the specifics of um, what we actually learned last time. So, last time, right, we actually started to with the Van der Poel oscillator, right, um, and we just used the phase plane plots, like you can see here, for the with the x on the uh, you know you know with x here and x dot here or x and y here whatever you want to name the states as so the phase plane plot uh, showed to us that all trajectories starting at origin start to head towards the limit cycle right and similarly all trajectories starting outside also start to head towards the limit cycle for certain values of mu that of course we did not see in any detail um, that's not of interest right now right uh, so rather interesting and we saw that it doesn't matter what the value of mu is all it does is it changes the shape of this limit cycle but eventually your origin still remains unstable yeah so which was rather interesting for us yeah now um, after that we uh, since we had already seen uh, the ideas of stability and uniform stability we wanted to go to the other set of properties which relate to uh, somehow system convergence yeah which is the sort of uh, property that we had verified using the babalats lemma on the spring mass damper system a few weeks ago yeah so these properties are of course they're of course named attractivity in the context of systems theory and we defined three different attractivity properties for the first one was called attractivity the second uh, uniform attractivity and the third was global uniform attractivity all right now um, we also pointed out of course that there was no such thing as global stability right because we have stable and uniformly stable there is no notion of a global stability but with attractivity we also have a notion of global attractivity right? we also verified each of these for uh, the Messera example, right? That is this particular example that we were working out, right? This particular example that we were working out, we um, uh, sort of verified which property it satisfies, okay? And we saw that it is at best globally asymptotically stable, okay? So, so of course, after seeing attractivity and global attractivity and global uniform attractivity and so on. We also spoke of the most desirable set of properties, which are the ones that are here, right? So all these are in fact the most desirable properties. The first one, and and why do we come to these at the end? Is because these are simply combination of the already uh, you know proven properties of stability and attractivity, and therefore we don't need to define each of them in an epsilon delta terminology because we've already done that for attractivity and stability, okay? So, uh, if you see the first one was asymptotic stability and I we use the acronyms rather frequently. So, I actually wrote them out for you at the left side, left, the left hand side of this. So, asymptotically stable or AS 
requires stability plus attractivity then we had i actually uh, put in something in the middle here so because the mesera system was of course more than it uh, asymptotic stable yeah so therefore in order to uh, sort of understand what's the best property that the mesera example satisfies we uh, also introduce the global asymptotic stability definition which is just stability and global attractivity and this is called gas right then you have uniform asymptotic stability which is uniform stability along with uniform attractivity right we of course verified that the classical mesera example is not uniformly asymptotically stable right um, i would rather go to this first that is guas which is globally uniformly asymptotically stable so this should be behind after this because we are looking at increasingly powerful properties and therefore i would rather put it above this so what is globally uniformly asymptotically stable it is uniformly stable um, as before but then in the attractivity i add the global property right so you have global uniform attractive stable yeah so it is uniformly stable and it is globally convergent yeah globally uniformly convergent so you can start from any initial condition and you will reach the equilibrium which you assume to be the origin for all of these okay so this is called globally uniformly asymptotically stable right so guas so one of the things that i usually point out at this time is that um for all of these cases you uh, there is no specified speed of convergence okay for example something like a t0 over t you know if if it so turns out that your function xt is something like a t0 over t right then also you have global uniform asymptotic stability right this is not uh, going to be too difficult to verify you can in fact do that i mean i mean let me be actually more precise say this is um i mean t0 over t times x0 suppose this turns out to be the solution i'm not specifying any differential equation or anything but suppose i tell you this is the solution okay so this is also globally uniformly asymptotically stable right why is that stability is obvious because you know it's sort of decreasing yeah um in fact let me say t plus one just to yeah make our life easy where i say t zero is greater than or equal to zero right so so for this kind of a system you can see that uh, you know uh, as time progresses i'm going to uh, get smaller and smaller value of the states right and therefore as time goes to infinity of course it's attractive it doesn't matter what initial size of the x0 ball was taken i'm guaranteed to converge for all possible initial x0 balls okay therefore this is globally attractive uniformity is of course not going to be a problem um in this case either so that is something actually that is something i will have to verify uh let me actually make this now let me make this something like this too to be sure that it is also uniform suppose the solution is t minus t0 suppose my solution is this yeah just just so that i can be sure of uniformity too so it's not difficult to verify that this is also going to be uniformly stable and also globally uniformly attractive okay so for this system you know this is globally uniformly asymptotically stable so this is also this is definitely globally uniformly asymptotically stable but now if i choose another system which is something like this this is also globally uniformly asymptotically stable right because it's not it's still converging the global stability property is definitely not lost and uniformity is also not lost i can promise you any any system whose solution has a t minus t0 in it 
is definitely going to be uniform this is a small tidbit for you yeah because you can if if any any of you have seen linear system solutions they always have t minus t0 as as part of their solution and never t and t0 separately uh, for all time invariant systems all right so great so if you have a solution of either of these kinds these are both globally uniformly asymptotically stable however one thing should be evident to you is that if you look at this guy this is this denominator is going to infinity much faster than this guy why because of this square term it's a quadratic so this guy is going to infinity much faster than this denominator and therefore this is going to zero much faster than this guy okay so this is one of the sort of um, if you may drawbacks if you may want to call it although we may not be concerned with it so much um, of the asymptotic stability definitions whenever we say asymptotically stable we never really talk about how fast we are going to zero yeah how fast we are going to the equilibrium origin in this case yeah and this is what exponential stability sort of um, formalizes okay and this is of course again for one particular kind of rate yeah it's not necessarily all kinds of uh, convergence rates yeah here we are always exponential stability as the term implies always means um, exponential rate of convergence and same with global exponential stability so it's exponential rate of convergence okay so um so it's not exactly codifying all possible rates but because we are giving nice liapun of uh, conditions later on so we care we sort of talk about these additional two definitions which allow us to codify some uh, measure of how fast your solutions are in fact going to the origin yeah, and we are not just saying that the solutions will go to the origin they'll remain stable and all that yeah we are in fact saying how fast they are going to go to the origin okay so what is exponential stability it's rather simple it says that if there exists constants r a and b which are positive right now note nothing depends on time and initial time and all that so exponential stability the way it's defined is naturally uniform okay and hence it's a very strong notion okay so exponential stability requires the existence of these r a b constants such that your state norm always remains within the a norm x0 e minus b t minus t0 okay and this has to hold for all t t0 greater than equal to 0 and x0 less than r i would rather make this a little bit more uh, you know precise and i would say this is actually t greater than equal to t0 greater than equal to 0 okay and for all x0 in an r ball okay so for all local that is a bounded x0 in some sense some x some ball of radius r and for all initial time greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to the initial time of course um you have this kind of an exponential decay yeah so you can see this right hand side is exponentially decaying because b is a positive quantity and t minus t0 is going to increase as t goes to infinity so this is an exponential decay to zero the right hand side yeah and this will happen if your initial conditions lie within an r ball yeah and so you are have an exponentially decaying envelope or an exponentially decaying shrinking ball yeah in which the state trajectories have to lie and this is called exponential stability it has been of course given the acronym es yeah so one thing that is sort of well known and is something you will need to prove you should prove is that exponential stability implies uh, uniform asymptotic stability okay yeah exponential stability implies uniform asymptotic stability so this is stronger than uniform asymptotic stability all right 
the next one is of course the global version of it okay and what does the global version entail it just removes the initial condition ball as you would expect whenever we remake anything global so one constant actually drops off so it has only two constants now right only two constants and it um, you have the same condition in fact is exactly the same and the initial conditions are allowed to lie within any um, anywhere in rn okay anywhere in rn is allowed for your initial conditions okay so this is the only difference as is always the case right uh, whenever we are talking about uh, global properties all we do is we remove the uh, bound on the initial conditions right so so this one of course has an acronym of g e s global exponential stability right? and of course it is true that uh, g e S global exponential stability implies G U A S that is global uniform asymptotic stability. Okay, so again, this is something that you will have to prove. Yeah, that global exponential stability and global uh, implies global uniform asymptotic stability. All right, so rather nice and strong property if you can indeed uh, conclude this for your nonlinear dynamical system it's not very easy yeah, it's very unusual i might add to have exponential stability for a nonlinear system okay for linear systems this is an obvious thing yeah again for those of you who have seen solutions for linear systems this is an obvious thing that linear systems always have exponential trajectories either exponentially blowing up or exponentially falling down yeah and so it's not a big deal in those cases but for non-linear systems this is a rather you know, rare property if i may okay all right so what we want to do is we of course want to see a few interesting examples okay we want to see a few interesting examples yeah the first oh, i mean of systems which you know satisfy some of these properties or not and so on and so on. yeah the first one is this rather complicated looking beast yeah of course it should be evident to you that there's no way i can solve this guy okay so we are no longer looking at these very scalar type systems which we can solve and, and then conclude and, and find delta given an epsilon and so on because as i had already mentioned those methods have rather limited applicability yeah because beyond a point you cannot expect to solve a non-linear system yeah and therefore um, we uh, start to look at these more complicated examples okay so let's see what we have let's see what we have so for this complicated system i'm not even going to attempt to solve it or anything i will sort of try to show you what the uh, system trajectories look like right so so basically the system trajectories look something like this here This is the x axis. There is something like a okay, so this did not work. Okay, so this is something like a, a bifurcation here. I'm going to make this bigger. sorry i apologize i'm going to try this again yeah not doing very well with the picture of course let me try to make a trick okay so there is something like a leaf like uh, bifurcation here and the system trajectory is outside of this
sort of do this it's not the complete picture okay and the system so it's still going to zero as you can i mean this picture i hope it's indicating to you that it is going to zero so zero zero is the equilibrium it's not difficult to verify um and the system trajectories inside do something slightly different i see okay this happened all right the system trajectories inside just form similar small petals okay just form similar small petals so these are like the state space trajectories right this is the state space trajectory so i'm plotting x1 on this axis and x2 on this axis okay so all trajectories outside do this curve around and go to the origin all trajectories inside do this okay so now it's obvious that uh, this system is you know, even just by looking just as we did this for the van der Paul oscillator we can do it for this sort of a system also right so it should be obvious to you that the system is attractive right write this in blue but it is not stable okay why is it not stable right so i mean again you can suppose i do this by making some epsilon ball i make an arbitrary epsilon ball around the equilibrium which is origin in this case uh, so let me make an arbitrary epsilon ball okay so i made this epsilon ball as you can see I'm trying to center it, of course. I think it was more centered earlier than it's now. Yeah, I think this is centered enough. <laughs> All right, with the drawing skill that I have. Right. All right. So, excellent. So, this is sort of centered at the origin. This is, uh, like I said, this is an uh, epsilon ball right right now what is the problem i think all of you can see the problem you can all see the problem from the trajectories i've drawn it doesn't matter where i start suppose i start outside i will get out like this from this petal and get in here okay suppose i start inside the petal then i still go out and then come back so this is certainly not stable okay now remember again again and again i go back to the stability definition because usually there is a lot of confusion on that yeah remember i have to be able to find a delta for every epsilon the user gives me okay a lot of students would come to me and say uh, but sir i can always um, you know um, draw this epsilon ball yeah this very very large epsilon ball yeah and if i draw this large epsilon ball sir i can always you know um get all these trajectories to you know converge to the uh, or, or remain inside the epsilon ball yeah or or you can find definitely some deltas which will sort of remain inside the epsilon ball yeah but that's not enough okay you need to be able to find me a delta ball for every epsilon ball i give you okay so this yellow thing that is out here is not the epsilon ball that i would give you i would give you this really small tiny green epsilon ball okay and then of course you will have some trouble okay you will not be able to find me a delta because everything that you give me every everything that starts inside this epsilon ball forget a smaller delta ball everything that starts inside the epsilon ball will definitely exit the epsilon ball one way or another so although we have the rather desirable 
uh, property of um, um, attractivity that is you have nice convergence but what's happening is that the system is going really far out to come back and converge yeah which is not allowed in stability yeah? you cannot go really far out and then come back then the system is not stable anymore sure it's attractive and if that's all the property you care about then well and good but it is not a stable system okay and in a lot of circumstances stability is a key property yeah stability is a key property if i have an epsilon ball and i want to remain in it i should be able to find corresponding initial condition balls yeah otherwise i don't have uh, so stability actually gives you a, for those of you who have um, experience of this frequency domain sort of um, you know a terminology uh, the stability property actually tells you something about the transient behavior right because it's uh, because it's saying that if i'm given an epsilon ball uh, then uh, then i can always find a delta ball so that my trajectories always remain within the epsilon ball always so that's telling me something about the transient behavior the bounds on the transient behavior all right and the exponential stability or whatever or the convergence the attractivity property that we have that we've spoken about is telling me something about the steady state behavior Okay, and all of you know that even in linear systems theory, it's rather critical to uh, have a handle on the transient behavior and the steady state behavior both. It's not enough to uh, have one or the other. In fact, a lot of people are happy to compromise on the uh, steady state behavior. They can deal with a little bit of accuracy in the steady state behavior. That is, even if your trajectories don't exactly go to the origin or the equilibrium, they're okay but they definitely care a lot about the transient behavior you cannot have transients which are simply shooting up to you know uh, dangerous values or absolutely bad big values and then coming back to the origin um, as t goes to infinity all right so in fact most practitioners would reject any controller um, which makes your system jump to large values before coming to the origin and yeah? they would basically stop and the controller right when it starts to jump okay so this is absolutely unacceptable okay. so both stability and attractivity together are key and therefore are the reason for us defining all these you know uh, new properties here okay excellent so this system is attractive and not stable okay let's keep that in mind and that's what it says here all right um let's look at uh, quickly the dynamics of a pendulum and we we've already seen the pendulum you've physically seen pendulums right i mean like a you know even the grandfather clock that you typically have at your home although that one is never stopping right but if you remove the battery right then it does this whatever i mean it oscillates for a bit then it settles down okay this is the standard pendulum so that is the pendulum with damper that is and the dynamics of that with of course normalized mass and things like that is something like x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is minus sin x1 minus kx2 okay this the phase plane portrait of this system again this is not easy to solve you know you cannot uh, easily get solutions for a simple system such as this either right but what we will what we will simply try to draw are some phase plane portraits so what you have right this is again between x1 and x2 and your trajectories wherever you start they look like spirals that are falling in Yeah, they look like spires that are falling in so this is i mean it goes on for infinite time and therefore i mean this is both attractive this is attractive 
in fact uniformly attractive uniformly stable and in fact globally uniformly attractive and uniformly stable it doesn't matter where i start i just start with the big spiral but i will still go to the origin and so this is in fact globally uniformly asymptotically stable so what i say here is not complete this is in fact globally uniformly asymptotically stable system right anyway if you remember we had sort of spoken of such cases uh, when time doesn't appear in the vector field on the right right you get uniformity for free okay so it's globally uniformly asymptotically stable system all right great great so um, what we saw today was the rest of the stability properties whatever was remaining we also saw that um, in order to specify a rate of convergence to the equilibrium we also can define exponential stability and global exponential stability properties which are very strong right and um, we worked out a few examples right we saw you know a rather interesting example of a stable and attractive but non-stable system and then we saw the standard pendulum example which is both attractive and stable so in fact globally uniformly asymptotically stable right um, and uh, so we have uh, we also sort of learned that uh, both transient and uh, steady state behavior are critical and transient behavior translates to stability while steady state behavior translates to attractivity properties all right excellent so we will do some more of this in the next session thank you mm -hmm.